Hi and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video we're going to be covering exponents. So in this problem series, a uh, set of uh, series of problems, we're going to be simplifying the following completely using the properties of exponents. Now our task is to express our answer using only positive exponents, right? So I'm going to run a rendition of these problems in two ways. I'm going to do them the long way and then the short way using the properties of exponents so that you can understand why we have to use the properties of exponents. It's not only going to shorten your work, it's going to help you understand algebra a lot better and uh, you can become a lot more consistent using these properties, all right? So let's begin with our first problem. We have x to the fourth power multiplied by x to the negative sixth power. Now in this case, we know negative exponents have to move to the denominator. So we have here x to the fourth times x to the negative six. So we're going to move the, the exponent to the denominator and we get x to the fourth over x to the sixth. Now from here we just have to simplify. So if we factor the denominator with the common factor of the numerator, we get x to the fourth over x to the fourth times x to the second, because there are six x's multiplying here, so if we separate them into four times the other two, these will reduce perfectly, because anything over itself gives you one, right? So these reduce and we get a one and a one here. So this results in one over x squared. Now I didn't use any other properties expo of exponents except for the negative rule here, right? Whenever you have a negative exponent, you want to move it to the denominator. So x to the negative n becomes 1 over x to the n when we move it, right? When it, trans when it transposes to the denominator. So here let's try using that rule to see if it helps us do this a little faster. Or actually we're going to use the, the addition rule, right? x to the n times x to the m gives us x to the n plus m. So here we just have to add up the exponents to get the new exponent. And when we multiply in these two, we have x to the fourth plus negative six is the exponent. This gives us uh, x to the negative second, which then we use this rule to move it to the denominator. That gives us one over x to the second, which is a lot easier to do. You can cut a lot of these steps out as well, just by saying you can go from here to here, no problem, and once you get here, you just move it to the denominator. So our solution for the first problem, one over x to the second, because we cannot have any negative exponents in the solution, right? There's number one. Now be sure you pause and rewind this video if you're having trouble understanding what I'm doing. Just re rinse, wash, and repeat, right? So let's move on to number two here. Now in this one, we have a perfect square. We have x to the second power times y to the second power. Now we all know that when we have a, an exponent, what we do is we just expand the term by putting it as many times as the power says. So we'll be multiplying this very same thing times itself. And again, using the rules of exponents, we're adding the powers x squared times x squared. We're adding the twos together. That gives us x to the fourth. y to the first times y to the first is equivalent to y to the second, because one plus one is two. Here's our solution for that, right? Let me just go putting that over here for now. And now let's see what the properties of exponents here. The properties of exponents say if we have an inside term with an exponent, and an exponent outside of the set of parentheses, we multiply the two against each other. So we'll have a to the power of n times m. All right, so let's try that with these. Understanding that the y has a power of one, right? So we have x squared, y to the first to the second power. We'll be distributing this power to each term. So we have x, two times two is four. Two times one here for the y is gonna give us two. And this is a short one step instead of expanding the things out. Now, since it's a monomial, it's kind of simple to expand it. But in the case you had a higher set of numbers in here, it may be easier just to distribute the exponent, all right? And that takes care of problem number two. Let's move on to number three now. Now remember, when using the properties of exponents, the properties add one on top of the other. So using them... Uh, using multiple properties at the same time may prove beneficial to you, right? Let's move on to the third one here. So we have 3x to the fourth power, y to the negative second, and this is to the power of 3. <clears throat> now in this problem, what we want to do, if we were doing this correctly, would be to move the y to the negative second to the denominator of the term, which results in us getting 3x to the fourth 
over y to the second. Everything inside the parentheses is now done, so we're going to move on and now carry out the exponents, right? And in this case, we're expanding this three times. So we get 3x to the fourth over y squared, 3x to the fourth over y squared, and 3x to the fourth over y squared. Now here, 3 times 3 times 3 will give us 27. x to the fourth, x to the fourth, x to the fourth. They're multiplying, so the exponents add. 4 plus 4 plus 4, that's going to give us 12. And y to the second times y to the second times y to the second. Again, the exponents just add, and we get y to the sixth. Now this would be the solution, so I'm just going to drop this over here. We have 27x to the twelfth over y to the sixth. And let's see if we could get a shorter way to do this by using the properties of exponents, right? The last property we used was distributing the exponent. So let's rewrite the question here. 3x to the fourth, y to the negative second, and we have the power of 3 out here. Now there's a number in here, right? So there's an exponent on numbers as well. If you don't see the power, you can just add the power of 1. And what we're doing here is we're going to distribute the exponent to each term by multiplying them. So the first multiplication is 3 times 1. So we have 3 to the power of 3. Then we have 4 times 3 for the x. So that 4 times 3 becomes 12. We already see we're getting close to the answer. And here we have 3 times negative 2, which gives us y to the power of negative 6. So we're going to move this to the denominator. And this is going to just get expanded. So 3 to the third power is 27. x to the twelfth stays in the numerator y to the negative 6 moves to the denominator and the power changes from negative to positive like so. And there's our solution. A lot easier than expanding it, right? Same solution, just a lot easier work. Let's get on to the last problem now. This is the most challenging problem. And for this reason, I put an asterisk next to the problem to show the difficulty level, right? So to do this problem, it's probably better that we use the properties of exponents because it just makes the work easier. But let's take a look at what that work means if we didn't use the properties of exponents, right? So here we have 2x to the second, y to the negative fourth power to the second, and 3x's to the negative second power, y to the third powers to the negative third. So initially our first step in this problem is going to be to move the negative exponents to denominators. So here on this side we have the fraction 2x squared y to the fourth and here we have this is squared then we have 3 the x goes down so we have 3y cubed over x to the second and this is to the negative third power. Now the second step would be to distribute the exponents right? So here we're distributing the 2 to the, the 2 goes to the second power 2 squared is 4. x to the second times 2, the power is multiplied, we get x to the fourth. And finally here we multiply the exponent here as well. So this goes down to y to the eighth. And we're multiplying this by. Now in this case we have nothing to do to this part yet because it still has a negative exponent. So what we want to do is reciprocate and take care of this exponential power, right? So when we reciprocate the inside it becomes a positive exponent and we get x to the second over 3y to the third and everything is raised to the positive third power now and now we can distribute the exponent in right so this stays the same we have 4x to the fourth over y to the eighth multiplying by x to the power of 2 times 3 is x to the six and this becomes 3 to the third power is 27 right and y to the power of 3 times 3 is y to the ninth. So here we get 4x to the tenth over, and here we're adding the powers as well. We just added the powers of 4 and 6 because they're multiplying. In the denominator, the y's are also multiplying. So we'll have 27 and y, 9 plus 8 becomes 17. That's our solution for the fourth problem. Now let's take a look at this with the rules of exponents to help us get there faster to the solution. Let's see which one works better for us, right? And you got to remember, for those of you watching, wherever you may be watching from, even though there's two different methods to do this, it's about the method that helps you best. It's not about what works best or what looks shortest to do. 
It's all about what, make, what, what you're most comfortable doing when you're solving these, all right? So even though one consists of more work than the other, maybe the style of work may be more up your alley based on what you have to do. Some of us have strengths and weaknesses everywhere, so based on your strengths and weaknesses, you should choose the way that you want to do this. So we have 2x squared, y to the negative fourth to the second. Let's try this again using the properties of exponents to the best potential. And here we have this to the negative third. So our first step is going to be just distributing the negative exponent to every term, right? Before we begin that, we're going to just move this whole thing to the denominator, right? So this goes down right away because negative exponents. So we have 2x to the second, y to the negative fourth to the second over 3x to the negative second, y to the third. And this is to the negative uh, positive third. And the reason why we're doing this is simply because when we distribute the negative exponent to the number, we don't want to have a fraction next to a, a, a regular term. It would be better to have a fraction of terms so that we get a regular number, not an inverse value. Because when we have a, a term to the negative exponent, this becomes a fraction. And to have a fraction next to an x means we have 1 over 9 times x, which becomes x over 9. Now, we don't want to deal with any of this, so to make it a little easier, it's better just to move your negative term down and then start operating with the distribution of terms, all right? So the first distribution of terms then here is going to give us 2 to the second power is 4. x to the second times 2 becomes x to the fourth. The, the exponents are multiplying again y to the negative fourth power times two the exponents are multiplying again, we get y to the negative eighth. That's a lot easier to move. Okay, so now we're gonna deal with the multiplication of the exponents in the denominator, where three has the power of one, so three to the third power becomes 27. x to the negative second power raised to the third, we're gonna multiply these two again. So negative two times three is negative six. And y to the third power raised to the third, we multiply again, 3 times 3 is 9, and we get y to the ninth power. Now the last thing to do in this problem is to move the negative exponents either up or down based on which ones are negative. So here we're transposing the negative 6 up so it can become positive, and the negative 8 down so it can become positive as well. So we get 4x to the fourth, and we're multiplying times this term, which is going to move up, and this is going to move down. So we get 4x to the 4th times x to the 6th over 27y to the 9th times y to the 8th. And now here all we have to do is add up the powers, and we're done. So this becomes 4x, 4 plus 6 is 10, over 27y to the 9 plus 8, 17, which is the very same solution we got in the last problem, only using the powers, the properties of exponents. Thank you.